First the fat boys break up. Now every day I wake up, somebody got a problem with ego. What's the niggas all fed up? Cause I got a little cheddar and my record's moving out the stove. Young fuck spitting at me, young getting at me. My nigga big, let's get it. Oh my gosh, what's up? Now I wake up to more bullshit. YouTube ain't sending out notifications, y'all know what to do. Oh my gosh. I don't know what's up with YouTube, bro. They, like, this shit is crazy. The notifications ain't even going out, bro. I can always tell. I just be sitting watching. Look, my man, Piggy Family. I never got the notification. That's what I'm saying. People just have to randomly be on here. What else is popping on um YouTube right now? Nothing. There's nothing even going on. They sitting up here not sending out notifications. Hey, 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 we gonna talk about that game, about that wilder man. I don't know why they ain't sending notifications out. D says, I haven't, <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. My man D said, how is he a shooter? And he said, I haven't received notification for months. That's what I'm saying, bro. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it, you know. They're just not sending out notifications. I don't know if other channels are going through it or whatever, but it's pretty ridiculous. Like YouTube, this is this what it's a great platform, but what I noticed one of the things that's cold about YouTube is they start fidgeting with a bunch of stuff that no one asked them to change, and then they be changing stuff that no one's asking you to change, but they're not fixing the stuff that people actually want you to change for the platform. Mill and Nikki about to fight already? Oh, shit. Well, shit, I'm about to stream. Fuck it. He big for a 17-year-old? Yeah. Shout out to White Chocolate. Let's get it. Picture me rolling. Butts in the bins isn't stolen. Yeah, man. I just felt like streaming right now. So, fuck it. We do what we want on this side. Shout out to Cali. California, yay. Hmm. Stream King is back. Yeah, man. It's it's weird. It's, it's I, I have no idea why YouTube has been tripping with these notifications. What's his name? White Magic? Uh I, I be getting them confused with is white something man I don't give a fuck white horses white chocolate white magic magic mike it's all the same you know what I'm saying it'll be white polar bear it don't matter he could scrap shout out to Ryan that's a unique way to spell Ryan I haven't really seen that way but shout out to you White boxers with black trainers. Yeah, but then go to the UK and it's black boxers with white trainers. Like Dilly and White. Calling uh, Deontay Wilder a black hillbilly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, motherfucker. Okay. Anyway, what's up with everybody? Happy Saturday. We just vibing. Y'all know the vibes. Still Death Row East. We just grinding. <laughs> Forever. 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 What's popping? We just warming up the mic. Shit, somebody. I see you got an accent. Shit, somebody called me and my best friend a, com a country bumpkin. You got an accent, I see? My, my man, I see, sounding twangy. Oh shit, Icy got the accent from Texas, bro. He got a country and western accent. That motherfucker. I got the horses in the back and I'm Icy and I ram. Oh shit. You on that you on that little Nas X shit. My man Icy. Icy said he got the horses in the back. <laughs> Icy, you be horse riding? That's what's up. You and Canelo? I was born ready. Yeah, but it ain't your average Texas accent. I sound kind of funny to some people. Uh, oh, my gosh. Icy said he sound funny. I got to hear it. 
This motherfucker, Lil Nas X of boxing. What? Yep, and all of you know it. The truth hurts. The casual. What happened? What? Tyree? Oh, you talking about the title? Yeah. Shout out to H Town already. <laughs> I fuck with Texas. Texas be fuck with me heavy. Bro, Texas is cool. Texas. Bro, you get slapped up in Texas. They got some real ones. But I mean, that's everywhere. But Texas is a big state, so you get big slapped up. Because there's just too many people. They got hella people. Bro, when I went to Texas, what I noticed about y'all is y'all got shit. I, I know the token shit and everything's bigger in Texas, but y'all really, like, I overdo it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know they say everything's bigger in Texas, but these motherfuckers ain't lying with that shit. Like, it got unnecessary. Like, the subway just be big as fuck. I'm not talking about a train station. I'm talking about subway to sandwich shop. It be like the size of a mall. Like, why the fuck is Subway this big? This motherfucker got... This is not needed for a cold cut trio. What the fuck? No, it's weird. It, it's weird, bro. Like, it'll be a Subway five... Five... Five dollar foot long. Like, and this shit be like a, a gallery of mall. Like, why the fuck is this shit this big for a goddamn Subway? Motherfucker two-story Subway and dumb shit. Y'all just be, you got, y'all got land, so y'all just be building shit. I ain't never been no motherfucking subway with an elevator and shit. What the, what type of shit y'all be on, bro? Why the fucking subway got elevators and escalators? Like, all right, I'm gonna go pay. Motherfucker going up an escalator. This shit is unnecessary. What the fuck? Y'all tripping. Y'all just be building dumb shit. <laughs> just be dumb. All the people dying and starving, can't get housing, but Subway two stories with a goddamn elevator and shit. <laughs> it, man, this shit crazy. Bro, motherfucker went into Ross and got lost. <laughs> Changed this shit from Ross to loss. Motherfucker, I got lost in the motherfucking Ross. What the fuck? That's, I don't even call it. When I go to Texas, if I go to shop at Ross or something, I call it loss. Lost. Like that TV show. You motherfucker get lost in the Ross bars. This shit was crazy. And like in Cali, all people do is go to Ross to steal and shit. So y'all, y'all shrink and theft must be crazy in that big ass Ross. The shit, there's actual places to hide. So if if in Cali, the smaller Rosses, motherfuckers be stealing like crazy. In Texas, you got actual, you can live in the Ross. <laughs> so the shrink must be insane Cause that Ross was big as a motherfucker bro For no reason Hey y'all tripping in Texas Why is the Ross this big to steal Motherfuckers hiding from security and shit <laughs> Like what you doing Motherfucker Underground like Harriet Tubman Stealing clothes Come on this way I got the shites I got the stolen material I got the merchandise Right here, hill. Hurry up for they catch us. Bro, what the fuck? The thieves got an underground railroad to get out this motherfucker? Man, y'all some Harriet Tubman shit, man. Come on. Y'all on that Harriet. You feel me? Bro, I'm not used to it. I'm from Cali. I ain't used to this shit. Shout out to Daniel Mason. He said, new media bars doing old media greasy. And that's something you got to deal with. He said, in the corner like a cut man. Man, we in the cut, man, like peroxide. Yeah. Wilder made the casuals pay attention to the heavyweight division. Big facts. Hey, I'm going to say something about uh, Texas, but don't kill me. You know, I, you know, Texas motherfuckers be angry and shit, like the Charlo. Um, I'm going to give it another chance. You know, I'm a foodie. I like, you know, good food and all that. But what a burger. I only had it once. And it wasn't live. It wasn't like what it was saying. But, but wait, there's more. The only thing I would say, it was it was DoorDash. So when I got it, it was like low-key cold. So, but anyway, when I ate it. I wasn't even, I just got a burger. I don't know. I just got like a cheeseburger or something. And I was like, this is what motherfuckers bragging. So I got to go back and I got to actually go in there and like eat there when it's fresh. Because I don't know what that DoorDash motherfucker Sold some weed on the way. That shit was hella cold. And I don't think my hotel had a microwave, so I ate it and it was like warm. And it just, it was like, it was low key cold. 
and it wasn't all that. But you know how some locations be better too? That could be it too. So I don't know. But I only had it once and it was like a DoorDash type of deal and it wasn't all that. Like in and out's definitely better than that that I tasted. Yeah, motherfucker switched the rappers, got me a Big Mac. <laughs> hey, y'all playing me. No, Papa Do's. Okay, now Papa Do's. Bro, I was in there like Biggie Smalls. I was eating everything. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Yeah, shout out to Papa Do's. Me and Blue Blood went there. That shit was real. That shit was hella good. How you delete Icy? What you doing, dog? Icy, come on, bro. How you gonna delete his comment because he don't like Whataburger? Icy, don't do that. I don't like that. Don't do that. Because then motherfuckers be complaining that there's no freedom of speech and shit. Don't delete his comment, though. That's petty. And and people, that, not stuff like that. Because I don't want people to get in the habit of that. That's 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 a little OD, bro. Anyway, um, I don't know. I wasn't really impressed with Whataburger. But again, I, I had it delivered. The Monterey melt, patty melt, sweet and spicy. Oh, so I got to go to Whataburger to get some chicken? Hey, that's I thought it was specialized in burgers, bro. I didn't know how to get chicken at Whataburger. It's like, oh, KFC, real good. Oh, don't get the chicken, though. I'm like, what the fuck? Kentucky Fried Chicken, bro. I want the chicken need to be good. It's just a fat, a fast food spot with a big burger. I don't know. You know what's good? That I wish they would build out here in Cali, or at least where I'm at, because I ain't seen one. Raising Canes. Shout out to my, shout out to the homie Kane. Kane. Shout out to Raising Canes. I don't know about no, uh, what's it called? Pizza Patron fucking with the zone. Best burger you ever had? I don't know. I mean, I had burgers in my lifetime. Shit, I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head. I had too many, too many burgers. And man, this new me the the best burger I had, the best beef was uh new media versus old media. Cause we we killed that. We we cooked that beef. That was the best beef. That old media patty. We turned these motherfuckers to a patty. <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's the that's the one. <laughs> Charlie's Philly steak, cheese steak. I ain't had that. I never understood the whole KFC Taco Bell collab. It might be owned by the same people. I don't know. You remember Carl's Jr. had that green burrito? Man, that shit weak. Carl's Jr. and green burrito. Cane sauce mixed with Tabasco. I never tried it like that. Let me try that. I like that cane sauce. Popeye's is owned by Burger King. I didn't know that. You know, McDonald's used to own Chipotle when they first came out. And then they released them. And then that's when Chipotle blew up. But, you know, I got to say this. Chipotle, low key, at least the ones out here, they like fell off, bro. When Chipotle came, when Chipotle first, like when I first started, they start popping up. Chipotle was hidden, but now it's just like, mm -hmm. it just ain't, ain't hit the same. Yo, Raisin Cane got the freshest strips out, my dude. No burnt ends, no rubbery, chewy part. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The Raisin Canes be, they be official. And they be having little cuties work there, too. I'm about to fuck around and raise their kids the way they looking. Fuck raising canes. I'm about to raise your kids. She fine as a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'll raise little Kane because she, she was fine. Yeah, that was a cameo from Samuel L. Jack and Menace. Y'all right? Smash the like button. We just warming up the mic. We doing what we do. Listen, if y'all getting UFC 246, you going to get that 246? You finna get that 246 cut, right? Use my link. It helps the channel. Conor McGregor is about to fight. And we just, oh, my gosh. The money just keep coming in. Shout out to Simon. Hey, Ego, what's your thoughts 
on Dillian White disrespecting Deontay Wilder on Sky TV. I don't know. He just, what did he say? Like, I don't know if I seen it. He said he's a cop. I mean, it's the same shit, bro. I don't know what he said particularly, so it's hard for me to comment. Love white girls with camo hats at Kane. I ain't, I don't know what. That guy is giving Mill Nicky a different look. He's young, so he's going to have to learn. Man, listen. I Listen, I'm going to tell you, I don't feel sorry for Dillian White. Y'all crying. I feel like Justin Timberlake. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Cry me a river. Cry me a river. Bro, cry me a river. I don't feel sorry for him because... Listen to what I'm saying. I man, I can't I can't wait. I can't wait. I want to do a hot seat. Some man, I've been looking everywhere. Can you please do a hot seat with me? Somebody going to get fried. I I can't wait. I can't wait for somebody to take the bait. Yeah, take this hot seat, bro. Dillian White hasn't received a title shot. He keeps crying about like 800 days, 1000 day, all this shit. Who the fuck just counts how many days? This is just weird behavior. The, listen, the UK is not going to their their top guys that are out right now won't resonate with American audiences because of the way they're moving, how what they're doing is saying, bro. I don't feel sorry. What, who can who literally just sits and counts a bunch of days they've been wronged or something? That's, it's just like a pity party for yourself. You get what I'm saying? Oh, it's been 483 days. 513. Like, okay, we get it. Oh, I've been waiting a thousand days. Like, you're not fighting Wilder. We know. Like, it, it's, it really seems like a pity party. And as a man, like, bro, let, okay, for example. Oh, my gosh. Let me get it. Y'all want me to talk? Okay. Watch. When did Charlo fight Triple G? When did Charlo fight Canelo? I don't know how the fuck many days it's been, but he ain't got them. But he's not sitting around like weeping, weeping Willow and keep saying the same shit. Yes, he wants to fight Canelo. Yes, he wants to fight Triple G. He hasn't got it. We know why. They don't want to work. The franchise champion. You can say, oh, Canelo beats him easy. Then fight the motherfucker. That's it. Oh, Canelo would destroy it, then destroy him so I could watch it and pay my money for it, period. He said, Canelo acting like Charlo don't exist. Girl, you know you want this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I respect Charlo, both of them, but I respect Jamal in this equation or this situation because guess what? Even though it's wrong, even though he should, he's of the caliber, he should be getting Canelo, he should be getting Triple G, it shouldn't just be new media pressing for these fights, he's still going about his business. And guess what? New options are opening up for him. He can fight Chris Eubank Jr. I want to see that. He can fight against Dariyevchenko. He just beat Triple G's ass. So he's he wants those fights, but he's not going to sit around and, and mope about it. Dillian White knows he's not getting Wilder, knows there's a bigger British fight happening with Wilder in Tyson Fury, arguably two fights, and he keeps talking about, oh, I've been waiting 800 days, 810 days. We get it. It's like for sympathy, but again, it's hard to sympathize. That's one issue. Smash the like button. Someone do a like check. We got to stay on track. The kid got to stay on track. He just keep talking about the same shit. Wilder's a coward. Okay, he's a coward. Great. What next? Oh, I've been waiting 700 days. 800. Okay, great. What's next? Uh, We got to get the likes closer to 100. You know, these things should be pretty in line. We got 12 dislikes. Fuck them. Don't care. Anyway, let's get the likes up. What do you mean, where's Danny Jacob? He just fought Chavez and broke his nose. Let's get the likes up, people. Yeah. So anyway, Dillian White, he just keeps saying the same thing repeatedly, and it's not bringing, it just looks desperate. It looks bad. 
You keep saying the same thing. You're not fighting Wilder. The WBC t- literally, okay, he's the only connection he has to Wilder is the WBC route. Cool. You're the mandatory. Finally. You actually became it. Right? And the WBC already told you you're not fighting Wilder in 2020. It wouldn't get ordered until 2021 because Wilder already has established pressing business with a big fight in Tyson Fury, arguably two fights with Tyson Fury this year. Obviously, we got to see how the first February shit plays out. That's that's the reality of it, period. So what's the point of it? It's like clout chasing at its finest. You know, like, you know, you're not getting the fight this year so what's the point of continually telling people how many days you're waiting that that's already been dead it's like you ask if you could spend a night at your parents house they've already given you your answer you ask if you can go on a field trip they've already given you your answer so it's like what why carry on like this like you're pressing him like it's it's weird like okay here's an example Devin Haney pressing Lomachenko that's because he had an opportunity to get the fight, but Lomachenko's side didn't really want the fight. They wanted to keep it in-house, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Teofimo Loma. But it was a reality. The reason Charlo's not getting the Canelo Triple G fight, they could make the fight if they wanted to. They don't want to. But you, Dillian White, knows specifically that he's not going to get Wilder. It's not going to be ordered as his mandatory, which is literally his only in or connection to try to get Wilder fight and Wilder has more pressing business. So what's the point of running around and taunting when you know it's 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 like calling out a guy who has a signed fight already. That's basically what's happening. That to me that's doesn't do anything. It's a lame approach because you don't get anywhere from it. You like I understand when Wilder was smoking out Anthony Joshua because he made Joshua look bad because Joshua could have fought Wilder. But if it was already determined that Joshua's whole schedule was booked up and Wilder's only end was blocked, then what's the point of just keep talking about it? That's where I'm at with it. The WBC, which is your in to to force your authority or whatever you think you have on Wilder, they've already told you you are not going to fight him this calendar year. So what's the point of even, why would you count, give me one solid reason why you would need to count beyond that. When you know, per the WBC, not Wilder, Mauricio Suleiman and the WBC, that the fight is not going to take place 2020. Why would you keep counting from that point? For sympathy. But it doesn't work like that. Only people who care about that shit is the UK, if anybody. All right, let's say um, I apply for a job at Costco and they sent me an, uh, a letter in the mail saying, thank you for applying and coming in for the interview. But unfortunately, the position has already been filled and we hired someone for the spot. We encourage you to apply in the future if you're interested in employment with Costco, but we're not going to go with you as a as a hired, you know, we're not going to go with you as an employee, right? Then I'm making 15 videos about Costco as if I'm in the dark about the decision. They've gave, they've given me the decision. You see what I'm saying? They've given me the decision. They already told me what it was. So why would I keep making videos about Costco employing me when they've already given me my decision that they went with another candidate? Thank you for applying. You know, it, it's, it's, you're belaboring the point. You're beating a dead horse. Oh my God! Shout out to D Bevel, shout out to LV, LV up in this. Um, can't wait for February twenty second. I get to witness Fury get knocked the fuck out, just like I witnessed it last time live and in person. I was there too, bro. It, it's weird. They've already given you your answer, and you're trying to make it look like you don't know what's going on, and like Wilder has the option. And then beyond that, if there's, it sounds like he has contractual things in place with two networks 
ESPN and Fox, two different sides, Top Rank and PBC, all in cahoots working together, that took some effort to make that a reality. That's bigger from boxing. That's bigger for boxing than motherfucking Dillian White. I'm happy that's happening. So it hopefully it goes smooth and it, it opens the floodgates for, you know, Gary Russell versus Shakur, Shakur Stevenson or Leo Santa Cruz versus Shakur. This is bigger than Dillian White and Eddie Hearn. Nobody cares. So anyway, it's just too much in play for people to be worried about it. And then on top of that, Tyson Fury has is he OK. So he's from the UK. So he brings the same country. He's white, unlike you. So he might have different fans that are, are not racist that fuck with him for real, for real. Right. Then on top of that, he's done more in his career than Dillian White because he can at least say I, I gave Wilder some good boxing rounds and I beat Klitschko. Dillian White can't say that. Plus, he looked bad in his last fight. Plus, he failed a drug test, which they later, you know, coincidentally a day before. That whole situation, I don't even want to talk about that. It looked horrible, period. That's what I'm saying. No one's going to, at least on this side of the pond, no one's really sympathizing with Dillian White. And we could go deeper than that. I've already done this several times. I don't. I didn't think I needed to do it. But Dillian White has had several opportunities at a title. If you motherfuckers care so much, right? If you cared so much about Dillian White getting a title, then how come he didn't fight Joshua? It's just the it's played. The, you, you've overplayed your hand. Why didn't listen? Why was Gerald Miller ever selected over Dillian White? If you guys care so much. Why did Dillian White and, and AJ had history together? Why was he selected over Gerald Miller? I'll, I'll double down. When Gerald Miller failed a drug test, why was Dillian White not replacing? See, I'm telling you, Eddie Hearn and Joshua, they overplayed their hand. They thought Dillian White would be too dangerous to fight and switch gears from Miller to that different style of Dillian White. So they they tried to cherry pick Andy Ruiz, but then when they cherry picked him, he ended up losing anyway. So you, you try to take what you thought was the safer option and you end up losing to a PBC fighter versus even if Dillian White beat AJ, at least you have the unified champion still in the rematch room family. Horrible. That's how I know you overplayed your hand. So why didn't Dillian White fight AJ? Because they didn't want they didn't want to give him this. Dillian White's on record around December ish of last year, November, before he fought Derek Chisora, saying he got lowballed for a Joshua rematch. He said he got offered more and earned more for Chisora too than Eddie Hearn was offering. Bro, how is that possible? How you get offered more for a guy you beat two years prior, Chisora? Than an AJ fight, bro. The zone, the bank is looking weird over there. The money looking funny in the light. It's just what it is. How does the zone have the most issue making the big fights, and fights falling apart, based on really nothing else other than money? But you got a billion dollars. It doesn't make sense, does it? You have a billion dollar budget. Bigger than everybody. That's what Eddie Hearn was telling people. Bigger than anyone else in boxing. Yet you can't get Jaime Munguia to fight uh, Jesse Vargas for whatever reason. You can't make Dillian White AJ2 over money. You can't make Canelo versus Derevchenko over money. You can't make Canelo versus Kovalev the first time before he fought Yard and looked bad and almost got stopped over money. Right? It took a minute to get Jojo Diaz and Tevin Farmer to actually be announced. They, they were negotiating. Uh, AJ and Joseph Parker took hella long to get the fight over the line. You can't make Wilder Joshua. You can't make Amir Khan Kell Brook. But you got the most money? Now, that don't make sense. That's like Floyd Mayweather got the most money in boxing, right? Can he wake up and go shopping and, and buy a car, any car he wants? Absolutely. 
because he really does have the most money. So we know he can go and, and buy any vehicle he wants. DAZN claims to have the biggest budget, but they can't produce the biggest results. They can't satisfy people at the negotiating table purse-wise. But they can give Golovkin $15 million, reportedly, to fight Steven Rolls. Bro, the, the whole business setup is, is ridiculous, and it sounds stupid. Bro, Dillian White, AJ2, is a better fight than Triple G, Steve Rolls. How the fuck can you give Triple G? See, this is what I'm saying. This is what they do to black fighters. I'm telling you. You guys can say whatever. They overvalue all these other non-black fighters thinking they have crowds and fan bases and shit. And then, like, niggas want to penny pinch when it comes to black fighters. You know? Dillian White, oh, why would we give, why would you give him $7 million? I'm not going to do that. And then they can't get the fight over the line. But how's Triple G get 50? Give Dillian White 15 million. You don't think he'll fight Joshua for 15 million? But you gave it to Golovkin, rusty ass, bro. To fight Steve Rose? Really? That shit was weak. And nobody was checking for that. This is just bad business. That's bad business, man. And, and the other thing, Dillian White, you know, truth be told, sometimes he's out of line, and I don't agree with a lot of what he's been saying recently, but he's at least more um, charismatic than Golovkin. What does Golovkin really do? Bro, Golovkin got equity in the zone. He getting $15 million a pop, $16 million, whatever, for his fights, even though he ain't fighting shit, except for Dervinchenko, the fight he really lost, and he should be doing an immediate rematch, right? And these motherfuckers, you got these white people in the office and shit, and they're like just thinking Golovkin's the biggest deal. He's the big deal that everyone wants to pay for based on some shit years ago with HBO and some falsehoods that they tried to, to come up with. Golovkin is not as big as y'all motherfuckers think. Ain't nobody talking about Golovkin. I I probably made more recent Golovkin videos than anybody because I spread the love and talk about it. I ain't seen no videos about Golovkin. I ain't seen no interest in Golovkin. Just like Anthony Joshua. These motherfuckers aren't as big as the zone may think, you know, especially in America. Ain't nobody like, oh, hey, no, God, bro, people is off it. You got rising stars like Tio Fimo and all these other motherfuckers that are keeping boxing fans occupied. Out with the old, in with the new. Ain't nobody really just checking for Golovkin, like, you know. And then I told you, him getting greedy and not seeing eye to eye money wise with Abel Sanchez. That also hurt his profile, too, because Abel Sanchez said a lot of radical things and it brought spotlight to what Golovkin was doing, good or bad. It made people talk. Jonathan Banks is just like Golovkin in the sense that he's a kind of a quiet dude. He's not known for, like, saying outlandish headlines. So now no one's really talking about Golovkin. At least when you had Abel Sanchez, he would say some crazy shit like black fighters don't sell and you know, Canelo's gloves and Canelo's on the juice. You know, he would say some controversial things to get you some hits. Ain't nobody even talking about Golovkin. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody just like really just making daily. They need motherfuckers. And this is this is why, listen, I studied the game. I perfected the game. I've been in it long enough and I seen what old media was doing and we just flip it. Nicks talk shit. I just flip it on you. Sorry, Lance, I'm just trying to advance my quotes. I ain't making you to put up my jokes. Bro, I just flip it on you. We just we just use everything. Like It's like Floyd. Fighter's aggressive. He uses that aggression against you. We did that to old media. Floyd shit. They all this dumb shit. We got these motherfuckers trying to compete with us. They building up. They building up what we... They talking about PBC and Wilder and the shit that they detest more than they talk about these motherfuckers that they actually like. Bro, we used your aggression against you, but now it's too late. So all them videos motherfuckers was doing trying to compete with me, talking about Wilder and Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, all these motherfuckers, you just did, you just, you fell for the mousetrap. You fell for the mousetrap. We got you talking. Now you talking about the same things that we, that we talking about. And meanwhile, the people that you allegedly support, ain't nobody talking about them.
You see how that worked? Oh my God. They fell for the mouse trap. <laughs> Y'all fell for the mouse trap. They talk about Wilder and PBC shit they're supposed to hate more than me. Every other video. But guess what? The people that they said, like Lomachenko, ain't nobody talking about Lomachenko. When the last Lomachenko video you watched? I probably made more videos about him. Who's just building up Lomachenko? You know, and Usyk, all these dudes, bro. All, everything, everybody that old media says, and these are good fighters. I'm just telling you what it is. All these people that old media says the truth, ain't nobody building them up. They not big American names. Wilder's big wherever. He can go to the UK and have a mob of people. Bring Joshua out to America and put him in Detroit or Chicago. See if mobs and droves of people come out to, you know, mob. I'm not saying a couple of people here and there. I'm talking about like mobs. Like when Wilder went to the UK. Come on, bro. It's, it's, it's looking bad for old media. They getting beat to a orange juice style. Beat niggas to a pulp. They getting beat to a pulp, bro. Jorge Cota, he's not bad, bro. Charlo just made him look bad when he slept him. And Erickson Lubin, shout out to that. They not trying for boxing fans. They trying for box in fan. Oh, ugh, he came with the bar. He said they not trying for boxing fans. They trying to box in fans. Oh, bars. He said they trying to box in fans. Facts. That's good. NBA films. That's good. Yeah, they trying to box us in. Yeah. Well, I'll break out that motherfucking box like Chucky. Charles Lee Ray. I bet you I come out that box like Chucky. Hey, can, you can't box me in. I think outside the box. I come out that box like Chucky e. Bars. Yeah, they do we dembala. Ya Tuesday me. It's the quarter mock. Give me the power, I beg of you. Yeah, I I bust out that box like Chucky. I bet you that. Man, new media, we don't play. I bust out a box like Chucky. That's child's play. That's Charles Lee Ray. I said that's child's play and Chucky and Charles Lee Ray. Oh, my gosh. See, I got to stop with the bars. Let's get it. I bust out the bucks like Chucky. That's child's play. Young Charles Lee Ray. I day do e dem bala. Ya Tuesday. Man, who Benjamin James? Motherfucker sound like a fake-ass president. Who, who's, who's Benjamin James? Man, get him out. That motherfucker on a $2 bill. <laughs> get Benjamin James out of here. When they hate, somebody donate. I told y'all, y'all know the rules. They just coming in with random hate, somebody donate a dollar. That's it. Ego, that's too correct. How many times have you seen that movie? Oh, yeah, that's, bro, that's a childhood classic. How the hell do you know the spell by heart? Bro, I, I memorize these things. We, Bro, see, back in the day, this the new generation of kids is different. We didn't have all the vices and devices and shit that y'all got. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, in the 90s and shit, you, if you had a movie you liked, the best you could do is just rewind it on VHS. You know what I'm saying? So we would just, just pause shit and rewind it and keep replaying it. You know, now kids have different attention spans because they got much more to them. But that's how I, like, almost taught myself to rap and got into that because... I was listening to the people out, like Bone Thugs and shit, and I would, like, memorize their verses. I would listen on the radio, put a cassette tape in, record it. Bro, it's different. You know, put a cassette tape in the little boom box we had that got passed down from my big brother to my sister to me and shit, and I'll put the tape in, record what was on the radio, and then try to recite Bone Thugs. And I got good at it, bro. I was on... Running and a fucking and up and in agreement and I got my boo. We don't want to bro. I was on my bone shit. You feel me? I was on that busy shit just from practicing. Kevin Slim said, two dollars stop the hate." Now they can keep they can keep hating because the money gonna keep coming in, bro. We used to. That's how I started re rehearsing, and it gives you a feel for cadences and rhythm. Now these new rappers suck, and everyone wants to copycat instead of just being inspired and doing their own thing. I never wanted to be like nobody. You know, I respected LL and Pac and Nas and Biggie and Bone Thugs and Outkast. Andre from Outkast, Jada Corrupt, Nas and Nimi. But I didn't want to be them. 
There's a difference. You could be inspired by someone. Like, even on this YouTube thing, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but motherfuckers are inspired to the point where they just outright copy. My DNA is in a lot of these YouTube channels. It's just what it is, bro. My DNA is in it. Like, they just outright copy the shit I do and try to make it a hit for them. I never do that, bro. I always, when people are doing it, people getting face tattoos, you see my face clean. I don't need that. I don't, I don't want to do what everyone's doing. But anyway... Yeah, that's just a little background. The game is different. You used to have to, like, pay attention to lyrics. And, and that's how you get good with, like, that's how I can decipher bars and break down double entendres and triple entendres from just, you know, listening to music. I told you. I remember Bone Thug, when that Crossroads shit came out, I really recorded that to try to. Why they kill my dog, man, man? I miss my Uncle Charles. He shouldn't be gone. And right, up, Bro, I would really be on that bone shit. My parents probably thought I was possessed because I was in my room chanting and shit. Running and fucking and up and in agreement and I got my, you know, my mom about to knock, thinking, you know, tell me dinner's ready or something. And I'm out here like busy, you know what I'm saying? Wishing flesh and shit. Running and fucking and up and in agreement and I got my, boo, we don't want to murder ya. And it's so mysterious. I mean, nigga, when I get it, when I get it. Come kill, murder, with, with a little ripster. Me creeping, they coming to get you. Bro, I was, my parents listening at the door and shit. Motherfucker sound crazy, probably. East 1999, my niggas. Think about back in the day with a little nigga. What if it throw? <laughs> Bro, my mom's probably like, who the fuck is Mr. Bill Collector and Mr. Ouija? You know, little ripster. Who the fuck is that? I'm creeping and I'm coming up. We don't want to eat with you. <laughs> Bro, I was I was wigged out in a motherfucker. And I wasn't on drugs. But my music was my drug. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he said the first rap beef was between. That's not the first rap beef. That's an old school one. He said LL and Kumo D. Yeah, that's a classic. I remember Bone Thugs had beef with 3-6 Mafia. Did they beef with Crucial Conflict? Ego was probably going hard to yoke the Joker. Oh, wow. The first rap beef. That's what I'm saying. What about KRS-One? This man said LL. What about the bridge is over? The bridge is over. Like Y'all got to study your hip-hop, man. Come on. Hey, that Eminem shit. That Eminem, new Eminem bars. I, Eminem gets a bad rap. A lot of see, I, that's why I can't fuck with these little toddlers and shit. They be like, "Oh, nobody wants to hear this shit." These motherfuckers didn't even listen to the album, didn't even try to interpret it. See, that's the worst thing about this fucking internet is people have they'll formulate opinions. They're not even consuming the content to have an opinion, or are they qualified, bro? These motherfuckers don't even rap. You like, they don't even rap, and they be oh, nobody wants to hear that guy, bro. Who are you? You know, how you going to judge a CD you didn't even listen to? You just, because, like, I see the same shit. People are like, oh, Eminem's old shit was good, but he needs to go back to a slim shit. You ain't even listen to the album. This motherfucker was spitting. He was spitting. You didn't, you just, bro, a bunch of followers, sheep. Yeah, to protect the sheep, you got to catch the wolf. Are you a sheep or are you a wolf, huh? Bro, a bunch of sheep. Listen to the shit. Like, I never just, oh, the Irishman is weak, and I didn't watch it. The Irishman was dope. You, But, again, motherfuckers want to see in-your-face dumb shit. Like, man, pull up with the pole, pull up the pull of the pole, pull in the stick in the pole. Like, what the fuck? Motherfuckers, what? This shit don't be talking about nothing. Anyway, that Eminem album, Music Would Be Murdered By, he was gassing. That song was Slaughterhouse, Black Thought was killing, Royce was killing. That man said, oh, my God. Let me see what he said, because I don't even want to fuck up his bars, bro. See, this how much of respect. I got to give Royce his props. Uh, what's the name of the song Was with, with basically, oh, I Will. Okay, I got it. Hold on. This man, Royce, is gifted, bro. Eminem, Crooked, Joel, they was gifted, bro. They They all came with it. This man, Royce, but listen to what, see, again, I understand now why these guys, like young kids and shit, they're dumb, a lot of them. 
that's why they don't like that's why they don't like um some of these it's too intricate for them you know the bars is too tough and if you're not well-rounded you're not gonna understand why he said it or who he's talking about so therefore you have to listen to you know something else that just yeah you know just in your face with it but anyway roy said i'm a long he said i'm a long way away from where you are in skill foreign wheels my bitch wearing four inch heels she on the orange peel and she about to start taking off layers like orange peels sasha baron cohen pharrell where am i going with this oh yeah i bar at will that right there people don't even know what he's saying bro he said, I'm a long way from where you are in skill, foreign wheel. My bitch wear four inch heels. She on an orange pill and she about to start taking off layers like orange pills. He says, Sasha, Baron, Cohen, Farrell. Uh, where am I going with this? Oh, yeah. A bar at will. You have to know who Sasha Baron Cohen is. Sasha Baron Cohen is Ali G, a.k.a. Borat. They were in Talladega Nights together. Will Farrell. So listen, you have to, bro, break down the lyric. That man says, Sasha, Baron, Cohen, Farrell, where am I going with this? Oh, yeah, I bar at will. Bar at will, Will Farrell. Bars, like, since shot, I, I give you bars willfully. Bar at will. I bar at will. <laughs> bro, Royce is, he's nasty, bro. That man, he says, Sasha, Baron, Cohen, Farrell. Where am I going with this? Oh, yeah. Bar at will. Mm. Bar at will. Bar at will. Playoff words, man. Y'all y'all got to get with it. I can't wait for the allegory. Uh, Royce next album. The man is nasty. He been nasty since, you know, I, I checked with Royce. Even when he was beefing with D12. He... Man, you know, rest in peace to proof, but he, he got at D12. And he was like, he was beefing with Eminem back in the day. He was saying some shit. He said, what did he say? Um, He said something. He said, Royce 5'9". I came in the blaze shit, brought in by the white man like I came on a slave ship. Talking about him because he was beefing at that. And he said, he said. Y'all, y'all, y'all from the D, but y'all testing me now. Y'all a group with one star like Destiny Child. <laughs> he said you were good because Beyonce, obviously the biggest in Destiny Child and Eminem, the biggest in D12. That man said, what y'all testing me now? Y'all a group with one star like Destiny Child. <laughs> I was like, damn. But uh, anyway, that's just the beef shit. Um, His bar exams was hard, bro. You just got to know what he's saying. Biggie wordplay was ahead of his time. Shout out to Biggie. I know Yella left Shady, but I wish he made a track with M for the album. Yeah, but him and Royce was beefing with something. Big L, Fred the Godson, bars. There's a lot of people who got bars, bro. The bars is coming back. Hey, man, what's up with Cassidy, though, bro? I'm getting sad because I'm seeing a little shit with Cass. Like, he, he, go, he like... Zoning out to his, some of his beats. And they like, don't sound too good. Like, it's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Smash the like button. Sasha, Baron, Cohen, Farrell. Where am I going with this? Oh, yeah. Bar at will. Bro, let me find this. Smash the like button. We working. Listen to this beat. Bro, this shit sound like an old ass arcade game. No, that sound like the final level boss on like Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. That shit sound crazy. Like Cassidy is making some shit from 
like Back to the Future, like some shit that only he could spit to from 2006. Like, he said, do, 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 like, bro, what in the golden eye is this? This shit sound like Nintendo 64. Motherfucker, 32-bit ass beats. Like, this shit sound weird to me. And he's like at rocking out like it's the... No, I was not feeling that beat. Like <laughs> nobody, I don't know, bro. You can't live in the past. You gotta, you know. I don't know, bro. How can you even spit to that? Do 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 do. He said, "Legend of Zelda." <laughs> yeah, these link ass beats, man. Come on, bro. That should sound crazy. Man, I got a monkey arm. I throw the barrel like Donkey Kong. Like nobody else could spit to what the fuck that was. Man, <laughs> I got the Uzi in the tub. Man, put your body underground like Harriet Tubman. Man, I dump a slug. Man, like you just gotta you you know you gotta switch it up. He said, "Glad bag track." Yeah. He said, okay, SNES. It, it just, nah, bro. That beat sounds crazy. That motherfucker, that was not Timber Timberland. That was Birdman Lugs. Brrr, what happened to, remember them Birdman Lugs? Brrr, what happened to that boy? Birdman really had his shoe, bro. They was giving rappers, them the glory days. They was giving, Game had his own shoe. S. Doc Carter, you must try harder. And 50, Birdman had them boots, them lugs. I ain't never bought them Birdman lugs, bro. Shout out to Baby. But, bro, I, I don't know what was popping in New Orleans, but we wasn't wearing that out here. Motherfucker, what do I look like with some Jabo jeans and Birdmans? Brrr, what happened to that boy? Man, I'm from Apple and Eagle Street. I got these motherfucking Birdman lugs in the motherfucking club with the Birdman, bro. Hell nah. Apple and Eagle Street. Motherfucking Lil Wayne can wear that. I ain't wearing that shit. I'm from Holly Grove with the motherfucking Birdman lugs. <laughs> he said them 50 joints wasn't that bad. Either. Nah, S dot. He said British Knights. <laughs> Who had the worst shoes, Shaq or, or Master P? Them P. Miller sneakers was, bro. That you know it's bad because Lloyd Banks was king of the bars, and he said shit'll get uglier than a masterpiece sneaker. <laughs> bro, when rappers put it in a bar, <laughs> that's how you know it's bad. Bro, he said, "Man, I'm with the street sweeper. The shit'll get uglier than a masterpiece sneaker." Bro, <laughs> you know it's bad. Like you motherfucking rappers is putting this shit in the bar. Them Shaq shoes is ugly and motherfucker. Shaq too big to have the, you know, Jordan logo looks is cool because he was like 6'6", 238. Shaq too big. The motherfucker's logo look crazy. Get this blue chip ass shoes, Kazam ass shoes the fuck up out of here. I didn't like the Shaq logo. Hold on. Let me see if I can find the Shaq shoe logo. Bro, they finally made it. I think the Shaq shoes was in Kmart. My mom had the audacity to try to give me them Shaq shoes. I, I think I, I I chose some, like, some off-brand, like, some hiking boots. Like, some Route 66 boots or something over them Shaq shoes. Nah, you ain't finna play me. Because I, eh, bro, you know, man, get this shit out of here, bro. I knew what my school was finna do to me with them Shaq foods on. Bro. I didn't know Beetlejuice had his own clothing lines. I'm like, what? This should look like some Beetlejuice, Tim Burton ass shoe. Man, I ain't fucking with it. Bruh, this shit look like I work at Foot Locker full time. Motherfucking umpire, referee, blow the whistle looking ass, bro. NFL referee looking ass. Motherfucking zebra stripe. Motherfucking Michael Rappaport and zebra head looking ass, bro. Get this jungle fever ass shoes the fuck up out of here. I, right. 
Bro, you ain't a CBS logo looking shit. Look at that little CBS eye and shit. Man, I'm not. I ain't fucking with it. I love Shaq. See, look at this. This is my above the rim ass silhouette. Get off me. Remember when Nutso was playing by? <laughs> Get off me. Get off. <laughs> nah, I can't. This is too aggressive. Why he dunking like NBA jams? Nah, I, I, I couldn't mess with them Shaqs. Bro, wear these to my school, you would have got flamed up. Hey, dog, you would have got flamed. Promise you that. Look, yeah, wear it. I dare you to wear this shit. Yeah, wear this shit. This motherfucker look like Robocop on his off day and shit. Is that Velcro? What is it, Velvet? This motherfucker got Velcro on the shit. Hey, I ain't fuck with it. Hey, it like I had the Velcro shoes. Don't, don't front like I'm handicapped or some shit, bro. Everybody had Velcro shoes, but I my shits had like the two Velcro skinny strap. It wasn't one big ass latch of Velcro. Hell nah. This motherfucker went to aisle 17 at Home Depot, just got the actual thick ass Velcro strap. Nah, son. Bro, look. Then put a straight jacket clamp on this. Nah, I ain't fucking with that. Nah, I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit. Look at these fake ass Orlando Magic looking as. <laughs> hey, I ain't wet. Man, you go to school shacked in the fool with these. They gonna shack the fool <laughs> when you pull up with them. Bro, look at that. Look at that strap me down. Nah. A Velcro strap over the laces? Nah. You motherfucking Shaq featuring Dr. Scholl's get Joe Montana's Skechers shape up shit the fuck up out of here. Remember them Joe Montana? Joe Montana. Hey, if you would do, listen, if you a dude that got Skechers shape ups and you subscribe to me, unsubscribe. If you was wearing Joe Montana and Skechers shape ups, them motherfuckers was like big ass Clydesdale hooves and shit. Hella thick. Motherfucker dude be 5'4", and he be 6'1", with them Skechers shape-ups. Nah. If you, listen, if you wore Skechers shape-ups, trying to get your ass right, I think my butt getting big, uh, then just leave my channel eternally. I don't want you. I don't want you on my channel. Nah, Cross Colors was ill, but if you wore Skechers shape-ups, please leave. You motherfucker doing Pilates and shit. Dudes wearing a man purse doing Pilates and shit. <sighs> motherfucker with the sketcher shit. Nah, get off my shit. What's next? You about to wear Malik Yoba's new sneakers and shit, man. What? Where Malik Yoba been? You about to wear them New York Undercover sneakers. Y'all got to leave my channel immediately. Yeah, they banned from TV. They banned for the channel. Oh, my God. Shaq did Skechers, too? This man will not give up. <laughs> he has Skechers shoes? Bro, it looked like a little kid Crayola this shoe. Man, hell nah. This shit look like Four Loco can. The Four Loco sneaker. Go Loco. Four Loco. Nah, I ain't fucking with it. Yeah, I'm not fucking with these. Hey, you know what was raw back in the day? Them LA Gear lights. I'll wear them. That shit. I'll wear that. Them light. I used to just be tap dancing and shit on the ground, making it light up. Make it all light up. Diodoras, I remember that. British Knights. What are those uh, pro kids? Y'all don't know, but... I fuck with them Iversons, them questions. I had the, the butter tan looking ones, the pecan. Those were raw. Oh my God, one of my favorite shoes was the Griffies. I had black and red Griffies. They was wet. They was wet. There's a new Shaq Fu on PS4, Ego. Really? Who's he fighting, uh, Dame Lillard? 
He battling Dame Lillard on the motherfucking game. That's what's up. And Kobe. You unlock Kobe Bryant, Black Mamba, Kobe. Smash the like button. We just having fun with the game. What else is next? He said I had some Ewings. I don't even remember his shoe. That motherfucker, you put them shoes on, get bad knees all of a sudden. That motherfucker give you Pat Ewing knees. <laughs> like, damn. You in the sixth grade can't even walk and shit. Your knees went bad fucking with them Ewings. Hell no. Nah. I don't even remember what those look like. Motherfuckers start failing class, losing like the Knicks and shit. What a big L say? I'm from New York. I've never been a fan of the Knicks. My plan to get rich. I'm from New York. I've never been a fan of the Knicks. Nah, shout out to Patrick Ewing. Damn, that man said hey, he had them Ewing. Oh, actually, those. Okay, I do remember. I'm tripping, tripping. Yeah, I, the Ewings was raw. I, I weren't they? Shit, these shoes better than the whole Knicks season. Yeah, them them is clean. I don't know. I don't know. I'm having second thoughts. This shit look like. I don't know, bro. This look like an ice skate. I don't know. No, I think I'm. <sighs> okay, he doing too much. Yeah, he doing too much, bro. These fucking, get these beasts from X-Men, Mystique looking ass shoes the fuck up out of here. Why does it look like that? Bro, why is it? <laughs> hey, hell nah. Them electric blue joints. Motherfucker look like a jellyfish or something. I don't know, bro. Y'all like that? You guys like these shoes? You guys like this guy? I don't know. I don't remember these joint. Bro, this shit real real life look like Beast from X-Men. Fucking Hank McCoy looking ass shoes. Shout out to Henry Hank McCoy. See, y'all got to know your comic books. This shit look like Nightcrawler, Little Brother. Beast from X-Men, Mystique looking ass shoes. Dangerous ass jellyfish looking ass. Hell no. Nah. This motherfucker look like pH balanced water. Hell no. Nah. Remember that character on um The Watchmen, the actual movie? That's what these look like. Who's that dude from? He was like, man, who? I forgot the dude's name. Watchmen. Blue man group ass shoes. Look, I'm lying. Bruh, my memory is too tough. Look, don't it look like cuz from the Watchmen? Dr. Manhattan, exactly. Yeah, bro. I'm lying. These shoes look dead on that. The Dr. Manhattan looking ass shoes, bro. Hell no. Look. Get these, man, get these sour punch straw looking shoes to fuck up on my face. Nah, he wildin'. He, he, he burnt, bro. He fried with these. Look, look at these Dr. Manhattans. Bro, you couldn't wear shit like this in my school. You getting flamed up. Mm, blue belly lizard looking ass. Man, come on. <laughs> he said Mega Man X shoes Facts That Mega Man had that cannon on his arm though I'm done Y'all tripping Y'all tripping Y'all tripping with them shoes I don't know Anyway That motherfucker look like a shooter with all that blue You trying to be too crypt out with them <laughs> you like, man, I wear blue all the way down to these Pat Ewing cut. I got these Pat Ewing cut. Last time I checked, it was Pat Ewing's on my sneaks. <laughs> Hell no. He said them sub zeros. Yeah, you're going to get zero pussy too. Fucking with them. That's what you're going to get. 
You're gonna get zero on the female. Anyway, um <laughs> Y'all tripping in this comment section. Yeah, get them Papa Smurfs off on my fucking screen. They look like them blueberry sour punch straws. Mm. Get these Zowers ass shoes. Them motherfuckers look like candy and shit. Hey, what's them chewy? Oh, airheads. Yeah, get them airheads ass shoes out my shit. He said, Arnold, Mr. Freeze. I, I am Mr. Freeze. Yeah. My mom bought me some with the gum bottoms because I was a hooper. <laughs> them joints was heavy as hell. <laughs> Motherfucker tried to dunk and fall. Like, you. you <laughs> <laughs> what he said this shit was heavy that's hella funny y'all crazy y'all crazy <laughs> y'all tripping man smash the like button we just having a good time what time is it i gotta watch these fights um yeah get them motherfucking twitter blue sneakers off my screen that should look like twitter motherfuckers start tweeting heavily in them shoes man come on um, yeah, get them Apple App Store <laughs> fucking blue shoes off my shit. Um, J Rock ain't getting enough credit, bro. He really beasted up in that her performance. That was very impressive to me. Shout out to J Rock. I'm about to watch the J Rock fight. Salute Ego, Real Brother, LJ, Icy, and the rest of the channel members in chat. Hashtag Ego's Armies on the Rise 100. Is the shit on right now? Shout out to my man. He just stopped it. Oh, damn. See, y'all can't be scaring me like that. I thought you said he stopped him. I'm like, I didn't even know he was fighting right now. His, he's fighting at 5 a.m., 5 p.m. Why? Why is he fighting at 5 p.m.? Is J-Rock fighting right now? Or Joey Spencer? They, all these fights already happened? Man, what the fuck? Did Joey Spencer fight? All right, I'm about to go watch it. Damn, y'all have me scared. Why y'all do that? Y'all like, oh, he stopped him. <laughs> what? Damn, what about the top rank card? I don't really see no many. Oh, they probably put it early because Conor McGregor. That's what it is. I think they're just getting it out, you know, so it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't conflict with that. Because I don't think they worried about the top rank card. Who is it? Alita Alvarez versus Michael Seals? Yeah. Nah, D. Bevel, it's not you. Somebody in the comment section said something. Uh, stoppage or something. Chris Colbert. I like him. Lil B. Hop. He cool. Yeah, man. We about, to, we about to get it. We about to turn up. Oh, my gosh. You going to see. You're going to see some changes on the channel. I can't wait. Shout out to everybody who helped the channel grow in such a phenomenal way. I'm getting these changes out early. We, I bought some new gear for the new year. I said I bought some new gear for the new year. It's about to be a new year. I'm about to drink a few beers. I don't even drink beer like that. It's about to go on, though. I got some new shit. I got that heat rock. I got that heat rock. It's about to go down on the channel. <laughs> Wait, y'all gonna see the gear and y'all gonna be like, oh shit, I like this setup. This is this shit is this shit is cool, ego. Man, we working. We just branding, branding and expanding. This is a continuation. Oh, let me talk about the man Wilder before I get up. This is that Cassidy beat. I gotta listen to that I gotta listen to that Cassidy beat to get me hyped. Um, let's talk about Wilder. What can I say? New media played a major part in the growth period of Deontay Wilder. Of course, he did himself, standing by his convictions, fighting the way he fights, etc. But y'all know what it is. <laughs> y'all know what it is. Oh, media, they have to look dumb right now because... They try to go again. This is this is what I love. I love for these opportunities where I could rub your face in the mistakes you made and the whole world could see it. 
Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, face of boxing, and I'd like to say we played our part in helping to make that happen. Just that simple. And it was so funny because I was the first, and like people weren't really standing. There weren't many people who were had a platform as big as mine, and they were standing up for what was right, which in turn was being fair and objective for Deontay Wilder's career because it was just a bunch of uh, frivolous bullshit and repeating Eddie Hearn's jokes and banter and all that. Just some guy from Alabama. Bro, if you listen, listen to that statement, bro. That shows you that they overplayed their hand. Just some guy from Alabama. You get what I'm saying? That they underestimated Wilder and his intelligence. They underestimated that whole shebang. And they underestimated and they thought he was just some like country bumpkin like my man Icy. They thought he was just like some dude and he didn't have a strong team. He had no followers and, you know, all the typical stereotypes that the old media tries to throw out. Right? But guess what? You see what it is. Yahoo Sports, a big corporation, big company, they just did an article too. I told you, new media, we control the narrative. They just did a huge article or whatever, a big article, big big brand. And it says, Deontay Wilder, hold on. Y'all, y'all must have forgot, hold on. I made a video about it, we unpacked, coming to you live. I told you, once again, it's on. Mm. Yahoo Sports. Mm -mm -mm. Kevin Ioli. I made a video about it. Deontay Wilder has single-handedly revived the heavyweight division. Mm -mm -mm. So you tell me who won. They see him. I see them. They run. You tell me who won the battle. Because now, like I told you, new media we control the narrative we have forced people to see our vantage point and what we've been saying all along meanwhile old media was telling you nobody knows wilder he's just some guy from alabama he's bum squad wilder he's not the face of boxing he's chicken leg wilder he's wild style sloppy windmill wilder all this stupid shit and now you get major companies saying the narrative we've been telling you. And you see the success of the channel and the continued growth and the super chats. And you look at old media, it's not looking so good. I told you, it, pay, it pays to just be real with yourself and to give this stuff a fair shake. I've been in the game far too long. This is who I am. So it just kind of works hand in hand. But Deontay Wilder is big business. People are no like people are if Wilder talk like TMZ, they they're not asking Joshua stuff or Dillian White. He's not they're not getting people to interview them, even when they've been out here in America. When is the last time you seen Joshua or Dillian White on TMZ? Anybody? They hate us so bad. Facts, ego, new media, the real kings. Ain't no other kings in this rap things. They just my cheering. They disappearing. When is the last time you seen either one of them on TMZ? Dillian White or Anthony Joshua? Joe Rogan. You know, just big outlets in America. But I guarantee you if Wilder goes to the UK, he was on Good Morning Great Britain He's opening up new restaurants. He's at Nando's and shit like that. Bro, he's making his waves over there. When do they when is Joshua made his way? Bro, Joshua just did a meeting or some shit for with U16. I didn't even see no one report about it. I'm telling you, I told you how it was going down in America. Y'all thought we wasn't powerful enough and didn't listen. Everything 
goes through us. We control the narrative. We make shit hot. I told you, my channel particularly, me particularly, we have the ability, I have the ability to put somebody on the menu. You know what I'm saying? Like put them into a position to help their brand. It's, it's exposure. I told you who to check for. I've said tons of people on my channel. Guillermo Rigondeaux, Luis Ortiz, Joey Spencer. You know, I told you to check for Mario Barrios. I told you all to check out for Andre Ward, Terrence Crawford. You know, just keep supporting Deontay Wilder, uh, Errol Spence, you know, Charlo. We gave people a fair shake when other people weren't willing to do that. You know, people just want to talk like the Charlos are menace to society and all this. And Errol Spence, you know, making bullshit videos about him and stuff. And we set the record straight. And you see all of these guys, for the most part, they're all flourishing, having good careers. So Errol Spence, look at all the negative shit that they try to throw on this man. You know, saying, look at his nipples. And he's on something because he was running through guys. Why a black fighter got to be on something because he's running through somebody. But then Triple G or somebody, when he was running through competition, you don't see no one saying, look at Triple G nipples. Come on, man. You know, they say, oh, I love the action style. Triple G or Canelo or whoever. Wilder knock out people worse than both of them put together. I've seen more devastation from Wilder punches than I've ever seen from any Canelo fight. Any Triple G fight. When you seen someone, Canelo, sleep him, an, an adequate sized person, uh, a guy, and they start having a seizure on the ground. All right, I'm about to watch my man Joey Spencer. We'll continue this conversation. I should have started a little bit earlier, but check out my man Spencer. He's about to be on Fox PBC 2020. It's just going to get worse for him. I told you, it's, it's the manifestation have started. It's a continuation of what we've been doing. How are y'all watching on the app? Because someone's saying basketball's playing. I'll figure it out. It might be on the app that they're watching it. Download the app. I got it. The Fox app. Shout out to Fox, too. Fox has done a good job of promoting and helping to grow the sport in their first year. Um, What is the app? Damn, where's my... Damn, where... <laughs> I got to organize my um, home screen. Oh, Fox Sport. This is this the app. Sorry, I was doing the face recognition shit. Ooh, my Niners. Ooh, my Niners about to play tomorrow. Look at my teams. It's that yay shit. We don't play shit. All right, I'm about to go watch. It's on Fox. Get the app. We working. You, If you guys want to get UFC 246, use my link. It's in the description of this video and all my other videos. Click on the link if you're buying the Conor McGregor, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, UFC 246. It does help the channel using my affiliate link. It's about to be a good night. Let's get it. I'll be back with some heat after.